set, set their mind to learn how to cook, they could pick it up like this. Of right? course they could. That's if they set their mind to it. They may feel they don't have the time to set their mind to it. You know, just like the so-called nutty professor, you know, because because there's more pressing things, you know, for them to do. You know, and and. and they, you know, and their sense of time is different from my sense of time, especially when they're in the physical body, you know, because they may know the time of their death, and they may know the things that they need to get done before they leave that physical plane, so they're busy at those things, you know, so, I mean, they're not perfect, you know, and certain things they might be good or perfect at, but not everything. So yeah, I mean he he uh, he could have took the time and to to look into the future and see exactly when or what conditions his body would be found and and prevented that from happening. Of course he could have. If he was in deep meditation for a year, of course he had basic clairvoyance. He had advanced clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, don't make the mistake of worshiping people. You know, don't. You, you 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 honor a person because they're closer to God than you. You know, you, you worship aspects of their life because they're closer to God than you. But don't think that, that they can't do anything wrong. You know, they can do things wrong and they can make mistakes. So that could have been said that it was karmically appointed for him to die at that time? Or that was his lesson that he had to learn. It probably won't happen again. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when he come back again, you know, on this physical plane, he, he won't make that mistake again. Because he's learned a lesson. What question you asked? Yeah, he did. That's why they called him the Christ. Did he go further than that? Or of course. He, he ascended. He took the Kundalini to the furthest uh, level they can be taken here on this earth. And he went through the uh, ascension. That's how he was able to, to uh, you know, to walk back among men in the way that he did. Because he, he took his, he stepped out of the body and, and reconfigured his body into a risen body, which is an ascendant body. And then he stepped back into the body and walked among men, meaning that uh, that body, in a sense, be, uh, became indestructible. That guy, you know, I mean, he was the only one that can take it back down. You know, so he was able to walk among the ascendant masters on earth. And he was able to extend his, his mission uh, to another level. So, so, so that means at that point when he become, became ascendant, he was, he was uh, you know, he had the ability to, to, to uh, manipulate all the realms of earth, in other words. You know, there was no realm that he couldn't uh, uh, enter. Or, or manipulate energy on. So that completed his that, that completed his mission. You know, and that's that's one of the reasons why his his uh, his followers, the his teachings have lasted so long throughout the earth and constantly expanding throughout the earth. Although they're fragmented, they're still here. Relating back to the nine freedoms, can you say that most of them, if not all, have reached uh, enlightenment, some cosmic consciousness, and even fewer ascension? But, but generally speaking, in those realms, those are levels of. Mm -hmm. They are enlightened beings, yeah. They are enlightened beings. And that's enlightened would be where the, I guess the adepts would start, adepts would start. Yeah. 
maybe a little bit before then. But they are enlightened beings. So from the solar plexus up, definitely from the heart center up, uh, you have the adepts and the masters. You know? So, I mean, and those are the, uh, I think in the, in the Hindu scripts they say, I think the shining ones uh, reside there. You know, mm -hmm. the realms of the masters. So, and, um, at least from the heart, throat, and Christ center. And above. And Dr. King mentioned that we get closer and closer to that great change, that time change. Mm -hmm. That uh, those who are engaged in spiritual will be called upon to make more and more sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And uh, that there's just push to kind of empty out the lower realms and to give them that time on this to make that change this decision. Mm -hmm. But is there also a push on the higher realm to try and bring more of them back onto this plane and to put out the balance or do they still have to wait until it is the right time? Maybe to I mean they have to wait until the right comic, the comic time because if uh, this is just me thinking if, if uh, <laughs> If too many of them come up on here on the physical plane, mm -hmm. then uh, a lot of us won't, wouldn't be able to be here. So there's some great manipulation. Although, you know, although they move between the planes of existence, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, but a lot of us wouldn't be able to reside here on Earth on the physical plane. You know, and unfortunately, we don't have a lot of masters on Earth. <laughs> you know, we don't. It, when you look at population, you know, ratio wise, you know, we don't have a lot of ascendant masters either. You know, mm -hmm. so, but, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very important that the ascendant masters are where they are and the masters are where they are and the adepts are where they are. I mean, we have a lot of teachers. There's very few masters and there's very few ascended masters. Mm -hmm. Are they spread out throughout the, the earth or concentrated in certain areas? No, they're, they're, they're spread out throughout the earth I, from, from what we understand. They have retreats. You mean the ascended masters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have retreats around the, around the world. Some are secret, some are not secret. They're spread it out and they're strategically placed there in order to balance the common mankind. Mm -hmm. So, and then when uh, that's why uh, Dr. King was saying on the tape that you have some of these masters that pass and they have to stay on the realms for two, three thousand years, you know, because they have to wait till the right coming time to be born back on earth. So, that says a lot over there. But does it mean conditions have to be good enough or bad enough to go in there? No, they have to be good enough for them to be able to enter. You know, someone has to prepare to accept them. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not many choices, in other words. Mm -hmm. So so that's what brings about the right coming time. So it's not, you know, I mean, it's bad enough all the time, really. Mm -hmm. So you know it has to be the right moment have to come about and the right group of people have to come together in order to allow that being to come on earth. Right. But would wouldn't the prime initiation have changed somehow or at least tipped the scales a bit? Yeah, I, it, it did. I mean, uh, the, you had the you had that to happen and then you had um, come alight and all of that. Yeah, it, it did a little, yeah. It did. I mean, from that, a lot of the great teachings were able to come come out to the forefront. You know, I don't know if you notice if you track the time of those events as as compared to the teachings given to the world and becoming more popular. You'll see that you know the teachings exploded here on Earth. 
the, the, the mystic teachings around the world. Mm -hmm. So, and that, I think that's what made it possible. You know, before then, a lot was locked up. <laughs> um. I think I also mentioned the tape that, say a master wanted to, you know, to update his knowledge on how things are going on as well. He had a couple of choices, one of which being he would either send uh, one of his students or what have you, and would use that student as kind of like a relay, kind of look through their eyes and listen mm -hmm. to their ears to get a scope of what's going on, or they would listen to the thoughts of, uh, of the people around them, or they would tune into a particular group and listen to their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't, or is it a special case when a master decides to split off their consciousness and that aspect of it to a place? Why couldn't the masters do that? Why would they have to use an intermediary? I mean, they probably could do that, but it's all about the manipulation of energy. Mm -hmm. I see you like the tape uh, of the, uh, the lecture he gave about spiritual energy prices. Mm -hmm. So you can answer that yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean that's the reason why. You know, spiritual energy is is one of the uh energies on earth that we have less of. Okay. So so a lot of times we find ourselves have to go through uh the motion in order to reserve spiritual energy. In order to reserve spiritual energy. In order to reserve spiritual energy, we find ourselves having to having to uh, go through the motions of certain things. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to in order to get to the source, and that's one of the reasons. So, it sounds odd, right? Yes, I thought on well, <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes I think the energy on that end is unlimited, but it's. It's still the energy of the earth. Yeah. Although although we call this the earth and call that the high realms, it's still energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's still energy. And they have uh, they have the responsibility because of their knowledge and position. They have the responsibility of preserving, you know, preserving energy. You know, because it, because the lower planes lack so much energy on the earth. So and then by by working with the students and doing you know you helping it's it's a, it's a service too you know and by preserving their energies preserving their powers you know and, uh, it's you know I, I know everybody want to gain all this great power and be able to do all these different things but when you but but when you get to the position where you can do certain things. Uh, you'll notice that it's best to preserve that energy, mm -hmm. you know, than to use it. And uh, one of the reasons for cause of service, another reason is that every energy, you know, everything that we do, it, it takes from us, you know. And and uh, when we use so-called magic, we lose magic. We lose power, in other words. So we have to replace that power in order to replenish ourselves. So, so you have to be very careful about it. You know, you have to be very careful about your intent too. Is this realm the best realm that we're currently on for manipulating spiritual energy? Uh, for manipulating spiritual energy? Yeah. I mean, for karmic lessons, this is probably the best realm. This is the best realm for our karmic lessons because of the limitations that we have on ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is the best round for. Like meaning energy. performing the twelve blessings here as opposed to on a higher realm, would, would it go further performing it here than it would, or have more of an impact performing it on this realm than it would on one of the higher realms? Mm, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know the answer for that mm -hmm. because you can manipulate energies on the higher planes that you can't use here, and you can manipulate energies here. Uh, on this earth that you can't use on this earth. You know, you can get into such a spiritual state where you, or a spiritual state of consciousness where you pull down energy and you configure that energy to a point where it's useless to the people around you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. 
And, uh, uh, but you know, you could do the same thing on the other rim. I mean, now, if you're saying that, if you're saying that the, to, to, uh, I mean, this probably, this is the best rim to, to, to develop yourself or to do, or probably to do service, you know, uh, for mankind in a sense. This realm and the hells, and the whole hells is probably the best. Uh, because of the great limitations on you. Although it's greater limitations on you here than what it is in hell. Mm. You know? So so this is the best realm to, to learn lessons and to develop. Because you can go further here than any other point. Because of your limitations. Any other questions? We didn't get to this chart last week, but this is the chart that uh, this is the chart that, that actually uh, was what I was talking about the realms of the masters. They show you what levels, what chakra levels the masters are. that they operate, the levels of consciousness that they operate from. Do we want to have that chart? Mm -hmm. I have some extra ones here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I noticed in there he really didn't go into how do you become an adult master, right? Yeah. On, the, on the tape. Right? So he uh, uh, he briefly mentioned mentioned that in order to become an adept or a master, you have to control the power of Kundalini. That's all I'm saying, right? Uh, consciously up and down the spine, and that's that's essentially what it is. Is uh, it's, of course it's great more detailed than that, but but essentially you have to be able to raise the power of Kundalini up the spine and uh, to the highest point or to, or to one of the highest points and back down consciously uh, uh, without killing yourself, you know? <laughs> and to be able to do it at will, you know, you know, be able to do it multiple, multiple, multiple times at will. So, and, and essentially what that is, is taking this Kundalini because the only, the only way you blink your eyes and, and, and the blood rush through your body is through the power of Kundalini. The only way you express yourself in any kind of way inside your body is by using the power of Kundalini. Now, this, uh, just a little tiny portion of this Kundalini uh, uh, radiates throughout the body through what's called the nadis, right? And the nadi pathways have, have two, well, three, three main channels, right? And those three main channels is, is, ping, uh, is the Pingala, which is the mental channel, right? Uh, and, um, I mean, I mean, Ida, Ida, which is the mental channel, and Pingala, which is the, uh, the, the vital, the vital energy channel. Now, when, and then you have Sushunda, which both of the, the mental and the, and the vital channel runs through, which correlates with the spine, right? Now, when this mental and, 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 uh, and vital energy uh, intersects, you have a state of consciousness. It must intersect uh, a number of times in order to create the, uh, different levels of consciousness. Now, when you, when you latch on to this, this Kundalini, 
you drain the nadis of the energy of Kundalini and you bring that energy back down to the base chakra, right? At the base of the spine. You drain all the body of the, of, of the energy. And you start from, from down below. You push all the energy of the nadis from, from the extremities, the legs, and you push it into the base chakra. And then you force the movement of that energy up through the spine. All right? When you move it from, from the base to the sex center, the legs become uh, dead, lifeless, right? And you activate the first chakra after the base of the spine, which is the sex chakra. And your consciousness resides there. You can see through that sex center uh, uh, in, a, in a perfect manner because you have lost all the Kundalini at that point, at the sex center. Then, through deep and constant concentration, you move the energy up to the solar plexus center. At that point, Everything below the sex center becomes dead, lifeless. And what you're doing, you're bringing about a state of uh, conscious death to the body in order to obtain this higher state of consciousness. Then you concentrate the energy and bring it up to the heart chakra. Everything below the heart chakra is dead. And when you take the, the Kundalini to, to the throat center, there's no more action of the heart or the lungs. You bring about a conscious state of death in this deep state of meditation. Uh, it, there's, and then from there, you bring it to the Christ center and the same thing, everything below is dead. The only way the body does not fall into rigor mortis is by you keep a warm spot on the top of the head in order to stop the final state of what we know to be death to come about. And at that point, you're into a deep state of meditation, all right? True meditation is conscious death. It is not blanking the mind, okay? So at that point, at that point when you're raising the power of Kundalini, every time you open, every time you bring that Kundalini to, that, uh, to, to any chakra, you open that chakra up and you, open your, and you open the door to this endless state of knowledge and wisdom, okay? So, so you, can, you can see and understand anything on that particular level. When you bring it to to any to any level, it's called in the in the Sanskrit terminology, they call it the bindu, the point of consciousness of that particular chakra. Okay? So so that's what that's what adeptship and and uh, mastership, that's what that means, that you when you control the power of Kundalini. And you should be able to do this at will. All right. Now, the process of doing it is a simple three process. I mean, but it's really detailed, but so I just give it to you this so you can understand it. Concentration. You have to bring about a state of concentration, meaning that you have to bring about uh, uh, pointedness of mind. You have to be able to control, to take one thought and, and control it down one channel. To just take a thought and take it to the, you know, and, and, and think and think about nothing else. Okay? That's concentration. Concentration leads you into contemplation. Contemplation is when you take, if I if I want to concentrate on this phone, then I concentrate on this phone and nothing else. I let nothing else enter my mind, and then I go into a state of contemplation where new information begins to come to me that, that I had no access. It's just like you go into the computer and Google and something, right? 
instead of using a computer, you use your your mind, your org body, the combination of the the uh, the the, 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 uh, the cosmic mind of the of the universe. That's what you're tapping into. All right. Then you take this, and when you and, and when the new information comes to you, you're still concentrating. You don't allow your mind to go anywhere else. You take it to the next level, which is meditation. In meditation, you become the foam. You merge your consciousness with the foam, so that not only you can have information on the foam, but you feel and live the life of the foam. So it gives you ultimate divine information and knowledge, firsthand experience. You experience the life of this foam. And that's what meditation, becoming one with something. Okay, and that's why you channel all the energy in the body and you push it out that particular uh, uh, psychic center or chakra and you tap into this cosmic information, which is you, because you are the divine spark of God. The spirit is where the soul allows itself to be bathed in the light of the spirit in order to contact all information on the phone. That's what meditation is. And that's what makes a master a master and a teacher a teacher. Okay? So that's the difference. So, so when he say you control the, the, the uh, Kundalini up and down the spine, that's what he's talking about. You become a self-teacher. You begin to teach yourself. You don't need to go to the computer and hit Google, you know. The only thing you have to do is just touch something and you connect with the unlimited knowledge that's there, okay? And that's the difference of the master. Yeah? When, in doing that and raising the community, you're pulling all the life force energy from, from all the bodies or just the... From, from all the bodies. So does the ore itself retract? Into you and in a sense, yeah, you're putting you what you're doing. First of all, what you're doing is, is levels to it now. So what you're doing, in order to get into the highest mental state, you, you you're moving the vital life force out of the lower bodies. Okay, the lower bodies being the physical body and the astral body, right, and and some of the pranic envelopes that make up those bodies. So the life force that make it, that, that make it, it animated and, and intelligent, you're moving that from there and you're pushing the intelligence to a higher level so there's no balance, balance uh, a balance level that's stopping you from, from, from moving the way you want to move, in other words. Mm -hmm. You're killing out all blockage. All right. Now the 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 shushunda, the spine that you're placing this this energy in is a sacred place. So therefore, when you go through there, is clear perception. All right. The nadis outside of shushunda, there's distortion, there's blockage. So you want to place. It's just like you had an antenna. You're looking for the best signal, right? Well, in the body, your best signal is Shushunda, which is what we call the spine. Now, of course, physical science have realized this. They say that every time you think a thought or touch something, the, end, the, the thought is, is, is sent where? Up and down, down the spine. spine. Up and down the spine, right? And that's the only way you register it. Now, what they don't tell you is that uh, that that one of the, it's not is it, the the translation of it or the or the or the whole consciousness is not, is not in the brain; it's in the chakras, you know. And of course, each finger is connected to those chakras that's related to that. See, and that's why we tend to touch or or manifest or manipulate things through our hands, you know and we seek out new information through our hands. So, so, so that's, 
you know, and, and now when you get into the inner core of of uh, the spine, which is Sushunda, and there's three levels in Sushunda, then you have this sacred spot that's untouched. That's that uh, is the <laughs> is really the house of the soul, and 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 the door to to uh, to the all knowledge space which is the spirit. So, so, so that's, that's the journey that we're on, mm -hmm. to, to take this Kundalini and move this Kundalini up and through the spine and open each chakra, you know? And it takes lifetimes to be able to do it. It's not something that can happen, you know, tomorrow. You know, and if it did happen tomorrow, then that means that you have been spending Lifetimes trying to do it, you know. Um, to a physical scientist, like let's say a physical scientist was observing a master raising up Kundalini up and down the spine, um, on a physical level, what what would the spine look like? Let's say they put it in an X-ray or something or an electrode to measure it. What would it be? It would be supercharged you know, I, or something. I studied and read stuff on that, and I don't remember, you know, what it was. I mean. They did notice differences in the body. They noticed the body temperature drop uh, because a lot of those studies they did. I remember they did it like early in the uh, in the 1900s and in, in the in the mid 60s too. Uh, uh, there was uh, there was only a few that I know of uh, yogis that came forward. Uh, you might can Google. There was one Hatha Yoga. Uh, uh, guy, he was, he was a black guy too. They, they came forward and he allowed them to do all type of tests on him, and and uh, and they were, you know, they were totally amazed about what he can do. It might be on Google now because it was only, I think it was like in the '60s or the '70s. Uh, so, but they had they had other people that actually came and let them. Uh, I think it was in the, either in the '50s or '60s they did the biofeedback where they attach all these things to them and, and, they, and, and they stop their heart, they stop their breathing, they stop their heart. Uh, and, you know, and, and you know, they did all type of things. I don't know if they put any type of uh, curly in photography on them or not, uh, but I'm sure they did at one point. But curly in photography was not that, it's not, it wasn't as popular as it is today. Because right up to the 50s, a lot of people saying it's not real. The 50s and the 60s, they were saying that it wasn't real. Although it had been proven to be real since I, I think far back as the 1930s, you know. But but there's if you Google it or it might be out there somewhere, you can find all that information because there's there's a lot of case studies written up on it. Uh, I remember one famous case of a guy, which a lot of you know, musicians do it, but this Indian guy, he asked them to. He asked some normal people to just bury him. They, he told them to pick out the, uh, the, the coffin or whatever. <laughs> Let them build it. He didn't have nothing to do with it. He sat in the corner. And he built it. He told them to dig a hole, you know, three feet or four feet on the ground, and uh, put him in there and come back and get him in about four or five days. You know, came back and he was just as fresh as ever. <laughs> so, I mean, it's many cases of that, and they documented it. So, I mean, and, and you can go look all that up. So, you said every every cell in our body mm -hmm. is a life stream that has its own evolutionary path. Yeah. When we're raising Kundalini, are we pulling the life force from each cell as well? Or? Yeah. You put it in in a state of suspended animation. That's and you're helping that life stream. Okay. It's the same way if you have an animal, a dog or a cat or a, or a bird or whatever. And if you if you uh, if, if you live a certain way and, and live a spiritual life, then you're helping that animal to advance as well. Because that animal pull on you for its uh, uh, development. Yeah. My friend was asking, um, what happens if you like stop midway? 
Stop you're midway you're what? You're raising Kundalini. Stop then you die. Simple as that. You can't stop or you cripple yourself. You become crippled, you can, you can, because that's the life force of your body. So if you can't bring it back down to that level to become a functional uh, human being again, then you either become crippled, retarded, or, or die. So it's, it's, it's dangerous, you know. So be wary of the person who say, I'm going to show you how to raise your Kundalini in one weekend, okay? <laughs> you know, leave those people alone. They're wasting your time. And they and they probably taking your money. So, but you know, it's it's a, it's a dangerous thing. It's not you know it's not uh, it's not something to play with. The, the, the base of the spine, I mean the, uh, the solar plexus, the base of the spine, and the, um, and, I mean the sex center, all that came from the heart chakra. And it's the lower, it's the lower, it's the lower planes. That's where the lower planes start, from the base of the spine down. And from the heart chakra up is where the higher planes starts. And of course the the, the hells or the lower hells, the lower astral realms, uh, their goal is to reach the base level of consciousness. Okay. So uh, the animals, the derelicts, the, the whoever, you know, <laughs> their goal is to reach that level of self consciousness. Alright. I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, in the physical realm, we share we share the physical realm with a lot of different levels of consciousness, like the trees, the dogs, mm -hmm. the rocks, the minerals. Um, when we die, we go to the astral realm where our consciousness lies. But like, if I were to die, go to that astral realm, there's gonna be dogs there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In so, a sense, yeah. How do how does like the physical body is sharing a physical space with a dog, even though the consciousness is on a whole different realm. Mm -hmm. How how can how do you share? How does that? It's the same way you do it here. There's many realms on this physical realm, although we don't really talk about it. But there's many realms of consciousness here on this physical. I mean, it's evident when you look around you. You know. So I guess. And it's the same thing on every realm. So like the space we inhabit isn't necessarily the realm. It's the mental consciousness of the yeah. entity. Yeah. So like you go to the lower hells and you're gonna see trees and dogs there too. Mm -hmm. But there but you might you're still higher than them. You're yeah. just sharing the space, even though the realm is just yeah. and it's the same thing with the with the uh, you know, with the animals. You know. They they uh, it's the it's the level of consciousness that they exist. And operate from. So, all right. So, I guess that gives me better understanding. I mean, when you project, <coughs> you're still in the same space. You're just yeah. in a different mental capacity, per se. Right. So, the only way you can get to the higher realms is by purging yourself of all the passion and the lower, the the the, 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 the passion of the lower consciousness, and that's what takes you to the higher realm. Understand? So other than that, you'll you'll stay exactly where you're at. So right now I perceive this classroom, but this classroom could be sharing the same space with an ocean. But the only way to see that ocean is I gotta like raise my level. mentality to a much higher level. Or yeah. But it's still the same exact space. It's right? still it's in a, it's on a different frequency. And just like Dr. King was saying, you can be on the mountain. On the higher, on the higher realms, or the ocean, on the lower astral realm, or in the middle of a temple somewhere, but 
all the you know all the realms are here. They just on different frequencies, and all the realms are physical too as well. They just on a different frequency. You know, a different vibrational frequency. So, so technically, I could raise to a higher state of consciousness, perceive the ocean, and then be able to drown in that realm. Yeah. 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 Now, now, now understand this too, and see a lot of people. <laughs> this is getting projected. You know, a lot of people, a, a lot of people, it's hard for them to, to deal with that, right? Mm -hmm. But then they breathe air every day. Who who in here have seen air? <laughs> have you actually seen air? Yep. No one's seen air, right? But you breathe air, and air exists, and air is solid. Okay, it's a solid, it's, a, it's something physical, you know? Now, if, if, and, and we notice that when we do what? When we accelerate our movement, right? We feel the resistance of air, you know? And if we go too fast, we really feel it, right? It's the same thing with sound, it's, it's, and, and, the, and the military is using this now. You know, they can create a barrier of sound that does what? Knock you off your feet. You know, you know they have devices like that now, where where a, a, a group of a, a guerrilla, uh, you know, soldiers are coming towards them, and they can just throw a sound barrier out there and knock everybody off their feet and disarm them. You know, so so it's real. These things are real. It's just being able to to uh, to to move to that level of consciousness or that level of frequency. Okay. Now, if you can bring about a, a state of, of conscious projection, right? You can project to those realms. You can reconfigure your etheric body or astral body to to be able to travel phys physically. You know, <laughs> to that realm. You know, because why? You have brought about a projection of your astral or etheric body to the configuration of that astral or etheric realm. And then you can walk out there, you can, you can travel, you can eat, you can do whatever you want to do. Talk to someone, communicate to them, and, and, then, and then bring that part of your consciousness back into your body. You know, and this is done through concentration, contemplation, and meditation. It's just, it's just that simple. Now, once the animals get to like the base of the spine, mm -hmm. do they actually change their physicality? Like, do they form? They become human. They take on a human body. They take on a human body. See, this is why, now next week we'll be talking about reincarnation, right? This is why you will not come back as a dog. <laughs> because you have evolved from that, you know, at least some of us have. So, 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 so you will not, you will not go back to an animal stage. So that's, that's not, you know, that's not so. All right. So, I mean, I know a lot of people, when they hear about reincarnation, they talk about, well, I don't believe in that, but they say I could come back as a dog or a frog. No, you know, it's good not to believe in that, if that's the case. Yeah. Is that why, I don't know, this might sound odd, like, people that seem to be, like, very, like, simply minded, like, does that mean that they just got here from being a dog? Like, <laughs> no, not they, necessarily. I'm not saying you go from a dog to a human, but, I know, you know, people that behave like as a human would behave, but as a dog. Like, <laughs> they, they think about like food and like, that's just like simple like. Yeah, I know, I know. That, it, it could mean that they just, they just, uh, they could be new to the human race. Yeah. Or, or, or they just evolving very slow. <laughs> yeah. You know, I used to feel the same way when, uh, you know, I was in this, I was born into this, into this, line of thought my father was a yogi and and you know unfortunately I used to judge people like that <laughs> I see them and I see how they act and I say they just became human 
I'm not going to hang with them. <laughs> 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 I'm going to stay away from them. <laughs> but you know, that's not right. And oh my God, I just, and most people who ate meat, you know, I just could not understand that. I say, you know, these meat eaters, I don't want nothing to do with these meat eaters. <laughs> Unless they try to evolve themselves. But it's not good to think like that or to, because everybody, you need to help everyone. But unfortunately, there are people who, 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 who do just what you said. They just, you know, they act like an animal. They get up only to eat, you know, or, or pleasure themselves. Then they go back into their little thing, you know, and then they have no, uh, they have no uh, conscience of the next person or the people around them. They don't care what you think, you know, you know, they just, they just do their thing. You know, that is animal life. All right, any other questions? Um, maybe it's a dumb question, but mm -hmm. you said you, you, we do meditation upon something and, and we're able to get all that information. You become one with them. Mm -hmm. So is that the same as a san, sanyama? In a sense, that's one of the, uh, well, the sanyama, the thing about the sanyama is that uh, when you do a sanyama on, thing, on something, it's a, it's a form of contemplation of advanced contemplation and some meditation. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing about a sanyama is that um, you're doing a sanyama or something in order to in order to find the configuration of that particular thing and then reproduce it in your auric field of body. In other words, uh, let's say an elephant has great strength. So it's the pranic configuration that elephant have in its auric structure that allow it to have great strength. So you do a sanyama on the elephant in order to bring about that same uh, uh, pranic configuration in your auric field to give you great strength. So that's what that's about. You know, uh, now, so it's a form of contemplation and meditation. It's either contemplation and sometimes meditation. What happens if you do a sanyama like on the earth or something? What what you mean on the earth? Because the earth is the earth, you know. Like like you don't necessarily have to like have an object to do a sanyama on. Like if you do a sanyama on something you can't pers like see, but you live on the planet Earth, you can't really see it. But there's many parts to the earth. So you you have to be specific because essentially your body is made up just like the earth. The earth has its nadis. The earth has its kundalini. The earth has its psychic centers. So, I mean, what are you? What part of the earth are you doing? I was thinking as a whole. I guess that's, mm -hmm. You kill yourself or something. <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, why would you want to do that? <laughs> Look at a picture. Do picture of the earth, or a picture of the sun. Oh, well, because like that's the biggest. Well, that's I don't, I don't know if you'll call that a sanyama, because usually whatever you, what you're trying to do is bring about a particular power or or you do not taking power away from anything mm -hmm. you want to study it so that you know how it works and then you reproduce it in your body you know that's what you want to do it's just like and, and really and, and essentially we do that in reverse uh, without thinking it too the scientist does right the scientist study the body and instinctively they produce a car that works just like a body mm -hmm. you know the car has a heart has lungs you know it has all these different parts you know legs arms you know it has all these different parts just like a body you know and and but there's nothing that we create that doesn't relate back to our physical body. In fact, all, all things that we create, you can find an organ or a system of organs in the body that, you know, <laughs> that function just like that. So, 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 in, so in a sense, we do that in reverse. Now, uh, when, uh, when, when the yogis go and do sanyama, they do sanyama on different things in order to learn the energy configuration of that thing so that they can reproduce that or it gives them a particular power 
a knowledge, that knowledge can be translated into power, you know, to bring about certain, or, or, or to unleash certain power within them. You know, the ability to fly, the ability to see long distance, the ability to run, the ability of strength, all, all, all different type of things. That's what they do to say I'm for. Say I you were to, or you were to right, do the practice of concentration and contemplation, and get a, a picture of the sun, or actually spending time staring at the sun. Mm -hmm. What type of things would come to you from that. I mean, you, you just enhance the knowledge of of, uh, of the promise, mm -hmm. of the tabic rays. You'll begin to understand those things uh, on a great ability. The the nadis, the nadis of the solar system. You know, mm -hmm. so I mean, that's uh, it. Just increase your knowledge of energy and energy manipulation, and much more. I mean, because the sun is everything. So, but, you know, I wouldn't call that a sanyama, that's just a meditation. There's a difference between the meditation and the sanyama. I had a question about the, let's say, chart. Mm -hmm. as, as you move up the psychic centers, you're um, exposed to more and more of the topic rates. As you move, do you become, as you move up, do you become more aware of those topic rates? Because we're, we're, we're being hit by all the topic rates even now. Mm -hmm. But could we be, our awareness of them could be limited by which of the realm you're on? Yeah, I mean, the topic rays is really everything around you in the sense. Isn't it like the pranas and all the energy? Yeah, it's, it's the... The energy you learn to manipulate, isn't it also part of it? It's the vibrational patterns of all the rims. Mm -hmm. The tablet rays make up the rims of existence. You know, in fact, each tablet ray can represent a rim on, all on its own. So you have to look at it like that. It's like I ask because when you project, you know, you, it feels more real or more vibrant on on the ground than this does on this one. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe if we project from a higher center, we're becoming more aware of the top rays. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you you become more aware of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, things are much. It looks it looks is is real. Mm -hmm. You know, and all your senses are 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 open. It's not like now, where everything is shut down and closed. Very, very different. You know, you, in a sense, you are aware of who you are, but yet you are connected to everyone too. So, so that's you know that's the difference. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like right now we're only connected to the people that we see in here, right, or the objects that we see in here. But in a higher state of consciousness, you're connected. To, to maybe a whole country or, or the world, in a sense. So, you know, that's the difference. You know, you, you're, very, you're very, very aware, you know. And not only of, of that particular rim, but maybe several rims below you as well. You, you, you are aware, and that's the difference. Another question? Mm -hmm. Everybody understand a little bit more about the rims of the masters? No. Chance, you have a chance next week to talk a little bit more on it. I mean, we'll, next week we'll be talking about uh, uh, karma and reincarnation. So we're still on life beyond death. Tomorrow's the last class, right? Like, mm -hmm. Next week is the last class for life beyond death, right? Yeah. There's a Q&A after that. Oh, yeah.
Is it? Yeah. I, did, did you look at the new schedule? That's what the new schedule said? Let me check. I haven't jumped into it. Was that the, the Jesus discussion? Mm -hmm. No. We're still on the Dr. Kings. I changed that. Yeah. I said, yeah, you're going to do it for Easter. No, I know. I changed it. I changed it to the end of the year. Told us to read certain power. No, 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 not for that. On what? On, on what? These charts, like the life beyond death. Oh, uh, there's a there's a book called Life Beyond Death by Yoga Ramachandra. It's on our website. So you can just download it for free. And the chakras. The chakras for that? Yeah. It is uh is the. Uh, well, my book and 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 the, uh, <laughs> the serpent power. Book. Just close your eyes, like. Well, I had a question on the throat chakra. Uh, on the what? The throat. Well, so the yeah. name of that realm you have is a uh, Nana Loka. Mm -hmm. Is that anything related to Nani Nan Yoga? Yeah. It is. Is that where that yoga comes from, or? Mm, I think so. It's the, the rims of the masters. That's what it really means. The rim of wisdom or something. You know, silence and wisdom. 